back to my channel. It's Chelsea where we talk about all things glam and all things girly. I'm a beauty enthusiast that loves to talk about everything dealing with beauty and makeup and I do like to switch it up from time to time so I would love for you to consider subscribing and joining the Glam Girl Squad and welcome to Chelsmas. So today we are going to be talking about my favorite powders, setting powders, under eye powders, finishing powders, and then I just figured I'd throw in powder foundations because we're talking about powders. So stay tuned for all of that. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I truly do appreciate it. And let's get right into this video. So for my under eye area, I have three, four powders. Three, four? Yes, four powders that I will use for my under eye area. And I will go in order of like, what I would use least to what I use the most. Now, all four of these I recommend. I think they're all beautiful powders. And just to let you know what I look for for my under eye area, that area is quite dry for me. And if a powder is going to be too dry, I can easily see it when I go to set my under eye area. So I'm looking for a powder that's going to, number one, be lightweight, one that is not going to accentuate the creases under my eye, and one that is not going to look dry and cakey, even if I apply multiple layers of the powder throughout the day. So starting with the LYS powder, this is their Triple Fix Translucent Setting Powder. I wear the shade Ambition, which is for medium tan skin. And this is such a beautiful setting powder. It has niacinamide in it. I think it also has hyaluronic acid in it. And so when I place this under the eye, it looks so beautiful. It's very lightweight. Um, this is a clean brand at Sephora. So if you are concerned with you know, particular ingredients, it more than likely is not gonna be formulated with those. And this is a beautiful powder. Although this is what I would consider me using the least, I put that in quotation marks because this powder is beautiful and I truly do enjoy using it. On top of this powder being so beautiful under the eyes and in the, and, and in the T-zone area, I think it's like $19. So it is probably, yes, it is, oh, it might, this is one of the cheapest products I will talk about in this video today in terms of setting powders. Next, we have the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. I wear the shade Medium. Ooh, almost dropped it. And as you can see, I have given this powder a lot of love. This powder has been a long standing favorite of mine. I would say for at least three years now. Um, at one point, it was the only setting powder I was using under my eyes. And it's for the same reasons that I listed in terms of what I'm looking for in a powder. Lightweight, actually sets my under eye concealer and holds it, looks so flawless under the eye, and no matter how many times I reapply this powder, it doesn't ever look cakey, it doesn't ever look heavy, and it just refreshes my under eye area like I just applied it for the first time. I love this powder. I will always repurchase this powder for the very reasons that I love it. Um, and I think it's just beautiful. I do kind of run through this powder, if I could say fairly quickly, because it is so lightweight. It's so lightweight, it's almost like a loose powder, even though it is a pressed powder, which makes it great if you have dry skin because it is very lightweight, but you can kind of run through this a little quickly. The, so, Technically, I should have put this powder than this powder because this would be my second runner-up powder. I kind of went out of order. And the reason why I went out of order is because a lot of times if I'm wearing the Charlotte Tilbury powder, I'm gonna top it with the Pat McGrath under eye setting powder. So if I had to rank this, this would be number three and then Charlotte Tilbury would be number two. But like I said, I usually use Charlotte Tilbury first and then I go in with this one. So that's why I went out of order. So the Pat McGrath Under Eye Setting Powder, I have it in the shade medium. This is so blurring. So where the Charlotte Tilbury powder can blur my under eye area and perfect it on its own, the Pat McGrath Under Eye Powder just like further blurs it and gives it a filtered effect. So it like tops off what the Charlotte Tilbury doesn't do. This powder is so beautiful, lightweight. It even adds like a beautiful sheen under the eye. So nothing glowy, nothing with sparkles, nothing that if you like a matte look, you're going to not like this because it's too glowy. It just gives a, a almost a highlighted effect on its own. It's so beautiful. It's so smooth and buttery. 
And it, like I said, it is a powder that I will continue to repurchase because it's so beautiful under the eye. However, this powder doesn't hold my concealer by itself. So that's why I always pair it with a Charlotte Tilbury powder. It doesn't set it as long. So I, it'll set it, but it just won't hold it as long as my Charlotte Tilbury powder. So that's why it's ranking in at number three um, for the under eye area. Now, in terms of my number one powder, if you've even been around here for just a little bit of time, you should already know what this is. I have three of them. <laughs> Kosas Cloud Set Powder in the shade Pillowy. I mean, I don't even, I, I feel like I don't even need to go into this anymore, but should you be new? I am obsessed with this powder. It is the only powder I use right now. Like I said, I still love those, but I cannot get over this because this Cloud Set Powder does what all those other powders do in one. It is lightweight. It blurs the under eye. It gives me a filtered effect. It blurs my pores. Every time I put this powder up against another powder, it wins hands down. The filtered effect is just non-negotiable and it's all in this one powder. I swear by this Kosas powder and I am looking for its contender. I am because you know, I, I always believe that there's something out there that could be better. So far, I have not found it. I highly recommend this powder. It is a clean brand at Sephora, so if that's of something that is of importance to you, I will always like to point that out. There's no scent, no fragrance, or anything like that. And it just works for me. Like, <laughs> it is my powder of choice. I love this powder. I have, you know, like I said, I just, there's, I don't have any other words for it. It is the one powder that I tried this year that just completely blew me out of the water when it comes to under eye setting powders. So this is the powder that I always use down my T-zone. It is the powder that I use to set my concealer. It holds my concealer. Like it just does all the things in this one powder. So that's my number one under eye powder. I would just say under eye and T-zone powder. But like I said, I love all four of those powders. Highly recommend any of them. You can't go wrong with them. Now let's move on to setting powders for the face. So I'm going, you know, apply my powder for my T-zone, now I wanna set the face. So in terms of ranking these powders, I'm gonna start with this Gucci powder. So this Gucci powder, I wear it in the shade 07, and this is such a beautiful, silky powder. This one, I would say, I would say this powder is definitely my skin tone. It might even be like a smidge, a mid deep for me. I could probably go up a shade and it'd be fine. But this one works um, and I always just use a light dusting of it anyway so it's nothing that looks too heavy on the skin. Because I don't like to overly set my foundation because I like to have a glow and I like for my skin to show through too. So the powders that I like are going to be lightweight, not full coverage, and if they are full or coverage powders, I will use a very small amount, just to let you know. So this powder I really do enjoy because it is quite silky on the skin and it blends really, really well into the skin. I would recommend going in with a light, fluffy brush if you want just a light dusting of the powder, like for instance, hmm, like the BK Beauty 101 brush. See how fluffy that is? I would use that brush. Um, if I want to buff the powder into my skin, I'll go in with the Sonya G buffer brush. This is a smooth buffer brush, um, but it's really, really nice. Like for me, the reason why I'm putting this as in terms of, you know, last place for this particular category, it's mainly because there are just other powders that I have that I like better. It's not because it's worse, it's not good. It's just, you know, if I had to rank them, which I'm doing, this is one that I would reach for the least. But once again, beautiful powder, highly recommended. I thoroughly enjoy using it. And so it's not bad, it's just what I use the least. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Then moving on to the Range Beauty Smooth Out Translucent Setting Powder. So this powder is so, so nice. And what I like about this one, it's also quite perfecting too. So this powder, you can use it to definitely set your face. If you get a lighter shade, you can use it to bake. And although it does have a matte finish to it, 
it doesn't look cakey on the face, which I really do like because once again, I tend to not go for completely matte powders, like hardcore matte powders because I like a glow. And I feel like this powder definitely sets the face, but still allows for your skin to show through, especially if you only use a small amount. Like when I go in to use this powder, I literally take what's in the cap and that's what I use to set my face so it doesn't make my skin look too matte. This particular brand is quite affordable. The price of this is around $20. Um, and I also do have a discount code with this brand because I am an affiliate of the brand. So you can get it even cheaper. This brand also makes their products for people who have eczema prone skin and other skin sensitivities. So this is a great brand to check out, especially if you are quite particular in what you can use for your skin. But I really enjoy this powder. And for me, it's one of those powders that, like I said, if I want to go for a nice, smooth, matte look, but I don't want to look too matte, but I also want to look very smooth, I really enjoy this powder for that. Okay, coming in next, I have the Sephora Micro Smooth Powder. This was my setting powder of choice. I want to say it was 2018, I want to say. Or maybe 2019 this was the only powder that I would use like consistently to set my face this the name micro smooth is exactly what it is this is such a smooth powder this is a baked formula so a lot of times when powders are baked they're very smooth this is a newer one because I threw out my older one when I decluttered my powders a little while ago so um, this one is in the shade 35 highly recommend this. I have a girlfriend who actually uses this as her um, powder foundation because she likes to wear just a light dusting of powder on her face and you can most definitely use it for that. And because this is from Sephora Collection, I think this powder is like around 20 to $25, but it is so good. It is a very luxurious feeling powder. So I like to, like I said, dust this all over the face when I want to set the face, especially when I want like a nice light veil of powder. This is a great one to use. And then if I'm coming in at number one, this powder is new to me, but honey child, she is it. She is where it's at. This Armani Luminous Silk Glow Setting Powder. Look at how busted she looks. And I, I, had, I have not even had this powder at the time that I'm filming this video. I have not even had her for three weeks. And she already looks busted. Oh, honey child. Okay, so why I love this powder. Number one, it sets the face beautifully. This is shade seven, by the way, okay? Secondly, the glow. When I described this in a previous video, I forgot what video it was. I think it was my favorites, November favorites video. I said, I feel like an angel sits on your face and you get this heavenly glow. And that is what I'm talking about. I am wearing it today. And it just like, I can put foundation on, buff this into the face. I go in with my Sonia G Smooth Buffer Brush, buff this into the face. And I just look like my skin is all extra hydrated. Like I just be drinking all the water. It is so pretty on the skin. If you love a nice, subtle, lit from within glow, but you also want a powder that will set your foundation, this is where it's at. This is where it's at. I am only sorry I did not try this earlier. This is bomb, 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 bomb. And that's why it is my number one setting powder right now. And you know you're good when you have just entered the collection and you're already number one. I mean, you, it, it just is what it is. Okay, then I have finishing powders. I only have two finishing powders that I want to talk about. And it's really just one, but I have to comment on this other one because I have used this one a good amount of time. So I have to comment on this other one. So coming in at number two, well actually coming in at number three because I got three products, so I'll come in at number three. I have the Hourglass, what is this one called? Finishing Powder in Radiant Light. So it's this powder right here. This is in their Holiday Edition palette for deeper skin. And I really like using this powder for dusting it under the eyes. So I go in with the Kosas setting powder. And then sometimes when I just want that extra glow under the eyes, that highlighted look, 
I'll go in with this powder and I really like it for that because it really does allow for light to bounce off the under eye. And if I'm, if I'm ever going to be in any type of weird type of lighting, like for work or, um, I don't know, sometimes when you're just sitting in like an office setting, sometimes light can just hit the under eye kind of weird and make you look a little like ghostly almost, um, scary. <laughs> I don't know but this powder does a really great job of like offsetting that and let and allowing your face to look regular especially in in the under eye area so i really do enjoy this powder for that um so that is my number three powder finishing powder number two finishing powder is going to be the guerlain meteorites in the shade gold pearl so this is the holiday edition so this is what the cap looks like of the meteorites and then here is what they look like in the container. So this one is coming in at number two because this actually looks a little light on the face, not too light. It's just a little light on the face. So if I want, like this is the meteorites I would use if I'm wearing a cool toned look and I just really wanna look like a little cooler, if that makes sense, but in a complimentary way, these meteorites do it for me. They're so pretty, very complimentary to the skin and once again, the glow, honey, the glow. It, it is the glow for me. And that's why I love these meteorites so, so much. But coming in at number one, Guerlain Meteorites in the shade Golden. So this is what I actually put on my skin today. This is what they look like. This one I love because if I'm wearing my normal kind of, you know, neutral to warmer tones types of looks, this shade Golden is much more complimentary for that. And this shade golden will work for deeper skin up to, I would even say, a MAC NC50. It's just, I mean, the sheen and the glow, I, I can't get over these. Like, I use these every time I do my makeup unless I'm going for just a more matte look or I'm trying to not change the look of my foundation but these have become a staple and it's funny because i'm already wearing these down like i can actually see that i'm wearing them down and i'm just like well you know what these will be a forever staple in my collection but for me i like a glow powder i love to set my face with some type of glow finishy type of thing so that's why I love these meteorites. And I feel like the glow is not overbearing. It's not too much. I don't look shiny. As I wear my makeup throughout the day, my makeup does not look more dewy and glowy and oily looking. It just keeps my face looking nice and glowy, not dewy, not oily. And that, I mean, I can't ask for anything better because sometimes with setting sprays, depending on what you like to use, you can look more dewy potentially even oily depending on the skin type that you have and the setting spray that you use. These don't do that. They just set the face or finish the face, hold the face in addition to whatever powder that you're using, but you still have a glow. And to me, I just don't feel like you can get better than that in my own personal opinion. <laughs> okay. And then lastly, I have powder foundations. So going into order, I have three of them. And if I had, oh, this is gonna be hard. Okay, so I'm gonna start with number three. Yes, yes. Number three, I have the La Mer Powder Foundation. This is in the shade 53, and this is such a beautiful, lightweight, light coverage powder foundation. So this particular powder foundation, can I say powder foundation anymore? Yes, I can. It really is just, a light veil of coverage. It's very beautiful, it looks very silky on the skin, does not make the skin look dry or anything like that. And if I want just a light coverage of something on the face, a little bit more than like a setting powder. So I want a little bit more coverage than the Sephora Micro Smooth, but I don't really want a lot of like hardcore coverage. This is what I'm gonna go for. Um, I think it, like I said, it looks really beautiful. This shade 53 bronze is quite complimentary to my skin as well. And it's beautiful. Like, I love La Mer. I really do. I think the brand just comes out with the most amazing products. And so I had very high hopes for this powder foundation and it did not disappoint. However, coming in at number two, when I want more coverage, okay, but I still don't want to look cakey. I still don't want to look like 
I'm just walking around with like five layers of powder, but I really want more of that like medium to full coverage type of look. Ooh, honey child, this Chanel Ultra Latent powder foundation. This is the Flawless Finish Compact Foundation. I wear the shade B70 and that flawless finish term is where it's at. I don't do powder foundations and I'll be the first one to tell you why because I like a glow right and to me the powder foundations that I've tried before take that away you look very flat and you just look cakey this one does not do it it is so beautiful once again so G smooth buffer and I like to use that I'll buff it into the skin if you want fuller coverage go on with the sponge that comes in the compact but I usually am good with the smooth buffer because I don't ever want to be that full coverage with the powder foundation but this looks stunning on the skin and I can go full glam with this powder foundation if I want to or I can apply like a lighter coverage liquid foundation and set with this to get a more like flawless finish um, and it's just beautiful. This is such a beautiful foundation. It does have a scent. It has the traditional Chanel foundation scent. It's not too heavy though. It's, it's a lot lighter than what I would have thought it would be. Um, and the La Mer powder foundation does not have a scent. I didn't, I forgot to mention that, but this is really gorgeous. And, um, I highly recommend it. And then my number one powder foundation, because it's never too much, I can use it as a setting powder. I can also wear it alone. It is so smooth and silky and gives me the perfect light to medium coverage. For me, it's the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Soft Matte Powder Foundation in the shade 330. This powder foundation is so beautiful. It was formulated so beautifully. And if you're like me, you don't really like powder foundations, but you feel like you just want one, you know, just in case. This one is so stunning. It's just so beautiful. Um, like I said, I love that it's lightweight. I can go and use it on top of my foundations just for a light setting of the powder or like setting up the face or I can wear it alone and it's really pretty and even though it doesn't have any glow particles in it it does just leave like a nice beautiful sheen on the skin which I think is just beautiful this particular product does show up deeper on the skin than it looks in the pan so I think when I first got this I got shade 350 and it definitely looked a little too deep for me so shade 330 actually works really well for my complexion. It might look a little light against my skin, but once blended into the skin, it looks very nice. Um, and that's not anything unheard of with the Fenty Beauty foundations in general. They they all kind of oxidize, so I just wanted to throw that out there, but this is by far my favorite powder foundation. So those are my favorite powders in my collection. Let me know down below what your number one favorite under eye setting powder is, setting powder is, finishing powder and then if you have a favorite powder foundation let me know that as well because you know i'm always in search for some new products thank you so much for watching this video and if you've made it to this point in the video and you have yet to subscribe to my channel i would love for you to consider subscribing and joining the glam girl squad and tune in tomorrow for another episode of chel smith's coming at you we're having a great time here and guys that is it Thank you so much for watching and I really hope to see you in my very next video. Bye guys.